my name is Lorraine Stacker and I am retired now but I was formerly Penrith City Council's historian and research librarian and we are sitting in um, the library's research room and I'm having a conversation with Jim Mason who had worked for Penrith Council for 45 and a half years which I think is absolutely amazing <laughs> and so I know Jim uh, you had a lot of um, different um, careers in that time you were at council. So, but I think it would be really nice for you to just say something about yourself, your family and your background and how you ended up working for Penrith Council. Yes, right. Yes, my, uh, yeah, like Lorraine said, my name is uh, Jim Mason. Uh, I was born in High Street, Penrith on the 27th of August 1942 in a private hospital opposite the fire station. It's not there now, of course. And I was uh, raised in a family of seven. I was the middle child of seven. Uh, and we lived in Frogmore Road, Orchard Hills, on a 10-acre property, uh, which was given to my father by his father, where he built a house in 1936. I attended Orchard Hills Public School and then Penrith High School, where I completed my leaving certificate in 1959. I applied for a position at Penrith City Council that came up uh, at the end of 1959. Uh, as, at the same time, I had applied for a Teachers College scholarship and I'd also applied for a job at the Commonwealth Bank. Oh, okay. Right. I, I did receive the Teachers <laughs> College scholarship to, um, to, to Armadale yeah. and I was offered a position at the Commonwealth Bank. Mm. But after considering the options, I decided to accept the position of Penrith City Council as a junior clerk. And I commenced... Did, were, you, were you interviewed? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. yes, so oh, yes. Who, I went through an interview. You? Went through an interview. Yeah. Oh, I can't even... I, I think I was interviewed by the then town clerk, Harold Corr, okay. but I can't remember who else interviewed right. me. Right, okay. No. No. So um, I started at, on, at the council on the 4th of January, 1960. Mm. Um, council at the time had gone through a, uh, it was a very busy time for yeah. council. Council had only been proclaimed a city yeah. in the end of 1959. Um, Evan Ross, who was the old town clerk, had retired due to ill health and Harold Corr had been appointed yeah. the new town clerk. At that stage, the officers of the council were the old, real old council chambers on the corner of Henry and, and, Henry and um, Evan Street. Ah opposite the old, the little old primary yeah. school. Yep, yep. And that was the original council chambers that yes. was opened in 18... Oh, what, so that's yeah. where you... That's, that's where, where we started. Oh, OK. We didn't actually work in the old council chambers or the back of it. There was buildings attached. Right. I think some of them are old army huts yes, too. Yes, yep. And at that stage, the, um, the workshop for the council was still situated at the back of okay. the council chambers. Right, they yeah. hadn't moved at that stage. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. So that's where we started. And, um, was it, it computerised? Oh, anything? no computers or anything in those days. Yeah. It was all handwritten. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and part of my job when I first started was working, uh, writing up the transfers. Yes. So if anyone sold oh. a block of land, we had to write them up in a big register. Yes. Right. And, yes, and we the the um the library still has all of those land transfers going back to the early 1900s so yeah fantastic yeah. resource when i first started the council part of my job was to take the money uh the takings of the council yes. to the bank each day which was the bank of new south wales on the corner of high and castle ray street penrith so is it a big bag of money Oh, yeah, whatever the takings were. Right. You just took them so in. So you just walked down the street with a big bag of money. walked down the street and, put them in <laughs> and took them to the bank. Oh, wow. Right. Uh, as well as that, um, the council, when the rates were sent out, the council opened their office at St Mary's and uh, 
I operated an old cash register, yes, oh, which was um, a vintage one, uh, and it was in the side of the building which was occupied as St Mary's Library. Yes. And on the, on the other side of the library, uh, other side of the building was where the old St Mary's um, workforce for the outdoor staff. So is this the old council chambers? The old council the chambers. old St Mary's council, council chambers. Council chambers, yes. Yes, okay. Yes, it, it was yeah. then occupied by the library part, yes. where the library was. Yes. They had another room there where we collected the rates. Mm. And next door to that, they had a like a workshop garage yeah. with the outdoor staff for, for, that that were formerly worked at St Mary's Council, I suppose, mm, yep. when they amalgamated in '49. Yep. Yep. They still worked out of the St Mary's S depot. So on that corner was the the depot as yeah, well. Yes. Uh, yeah, they at still the had back a, of the they council had, chambers. No, where the, they had a. Um, a drive, a, a road up there yep. toward at the back of yep. it, yes, yep. and that's where they worked out of there. Okay. All right. yeah. So uh, that was the, the early days of working at St Mary's mm. uh, office. Um, I originally I used to ride after I used to catch the bus to to, to work. I then uh, used to drive to get to work by riding my bicycle to work. Mm. I didn't have a brand new bicycle, I had an old bike, which caused more troubles than enough. I didn't wear clips, clips on my trousers like the modern young fellas did those days. I used to roll my trousers up and halfway into Penrith, my trousers would fall down and I'd get caught up in the chain. So <laughs> I uh, was very pleased when I was able to get a licence mm. in, uh, in the latter part of uh, 1960 and get a, I, my first vehicle was a 1952 Holden, <laughs> a green one, oh. a manual one, which I acquired off my eldest brother, yeah. who had uh, had it repaired after he rolled it over up at Stanthorpe in Queensland. <laughs> so I still had the fra oh. fra fragments of glass in the car, I can tell you, when I acquired it. So I, uh, I found it a lot easier trying to get to work yeah. when I had a, had a car then. Yeah, yeah. But uh, they were the early days. Yeah of uh, trying to get to work. Mm. And I suppose the highlight of the year, really, in the first year I started was there, was going to the Christmas party. Right. Uh, mm. The council, they had a social council club. Christmas they parties. organised an annual Christmas <laughs> party. In those days, yeah. it was held at the old School of Art, not the School of Arts, the uh, Railway Institute. Oh, OK. In, in, uh, where the Q, yeah, in Belmore Street, yeah. where the, which was later the Q, Q Theatre. Theatre, yeah. Uh, they used to have the uh, Christmas parties there and uh, it involved, it was one of the few uh, um, organisations that included all staff, yes. whether you worked in, uh, the, on the roads or whether you worked yeah. in the office. Yeah. If you were a member of the social club, you were invited to come along. Mm. After working in the rates department for a number of years, um, uh, and gaining experience there. I also, that, it's, as part of the role in the rates department, I also attended, used to go to the counter and answer any queries and questions yes. that the rate payers had, yep. and also helped um, as taking, um, but doing the duties of a cashier at that yep. time as well, relieving yep. and things like yep. that. Yep. But you had contact with the public all the mm. time, because mm. they were coming in, querying their rates and so forth. Yep. Yes. So then later on, after a few years in the, in the um, rates department, I was transferred into the finance section. Max Baker was the, uh, my supervisor. He, he wasn't called at that stage the city treasurer, but later on he became the city treasurer. And I worked in that section and I was involved in the payroll. Right. I looked after the payroll, uh, just at, not at that stage as the paymaster, but as a pay clerk and then I became the pay master. Now in the early days of starting on the council, uh, when I first started we were only paid every fortnight mm. and we were paid in cash. Right? Someone had come around to your desk and give you a, a um, give you your pay docket, uh, pay your pay and you checked your money yeah. and so forth. Right? So that was the early days of, 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 of the payroll uh, after a period of time, 
it became weekly pay. Yeah. Right. But it, we didn't go on to uh, getting your money paid into the bank until many years later. That no, didn't I, come when in. I started in '86, it was I still, remember it, you coming it, around. Yeah, I didn't pay in cash. With my little envelope with the cash yes. in it. Yes. yes. I've still got some of those, <laughs> some of those little envelopes. <laughs> I hope they've I got money them. in them still. No <laughs> money. No. It's but well spent. I have to transgress and say, um, in the middle of, no, or later in 1960, we moved out of the old council chambers and went to the one on the corner of, of Henry and Station yeah. Streets. Okay. Right. Yes. Which was, the foundation stone was laid in 1959 mm. and it was opened in 1960. Mm. Well, that was a real opener going into a brand new building, mm. um, uh, which... Uh, were certainly different, where the departments were split up differently, yes. and it was uh, it was a real eye opener. And um, must have felt very had, modern. Yeah, had brand new desks, and yeah. the you know you were, you were I suppose we were spoiled because we're going from a, um, mm. a like an old army hut yeah. into a, a <laughs> brand new building, uh, which which had a caretaker who lived in, on site, mm. and his wife. And uh, and we had the privilege then of being served morning tea at our oh. desk, so uh, they the deliver the morning teas. Yeah. And um, and so that was part of the the new council chamber set up. Wow. So. And the old council chambers was pulled down, wasn't it? Yes, the old council yeah. chambers was pulled down, and in 1964 yeah. that's where the, the new library the new was, was built. built yeah. In 1964, mm -hmm. yes. So I progressed in working in the, um, uh, from doing the payroll, progressed through the, the finance or the, in that, the finance section under Max Baker uh, over the years to become assistant accountant to Max Baker. Mm. And uh, but was still involved with the supervision of the payroll, etc. Yeah. Uh, and as you said, in those days, <coughs> We used to get the mayor would have to sign the payroll check, mm. so we'd have to go to the mayor's office of a morning on the day of payday, get the mayor to sign the check, and then two, two of us would go down to the bank on the corner. The bank of Westpac was then on the corner yeah. of uh, High and Station Streets and get, the, and get the check cashed and carry it back to the council oh. chambers where we'd manually count it and put it in the envelopes. Oh there was God. no security so or anything. How much, how much money was oh, that? Oh, it'd be thousands of dollars. Oh, dear. <laughs> yes, because everyone, I think everyone but two or three people were paid by cash. Yeah. I think the town clerk and the engineer had their money paid directly into the bank. Right. And everyone else was paid by cash. Yes. And we had a couple of wooden boxes that we carried around. Someone would hand out the, your pay slip, yep. you'd sign it, and someone else would give you the pay, yeah. your pay. Yes. And then later in the afternoon, we'd then go out and pay the outdoor staff. We'd, first of all, we'd go out and pay the outlying uh, outdoor staff that couldn't get into the, yeah. couldn't get back to the depot to be mm -hmm. paid. We'd go out and visit work sites and pay them on the site. And we'd go to St Mary's and pay the staff that worked out of St Mary's on the outdoor staff and go and pay St Mary's Library yes. as well. Yep. Uh, and uh, then come back to the depot and pay the depot staff. Mm. Uh, oh and it was a case of, uh, of, of, of paying them. We always, we always had to balance at the end to see if we had no money left over. <laughs> if you had money left over, you had to go back and check every envelope oh. to see that you hadn't made a mistake. But we didn't have any trouble with security. Mm. Um, and no, no one tried no, to rob no, you. No, no one to tried to rob us. No, 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 none of that happened. Oh, wow. But uh, oh. in uh, later years, we had John Richardson go out with us, and he was more or less a guard. He was a fire control officer, but his role was to assist us on payday mm. and go out with us and mm. like uh, and be as, as an extra yeah. supervisor guard type of thing. Yep, yep. But in, in, then in later years. Council negotiated through the union to have staff paid their wages directly into the bank. Yeah. And for that mm. privilege or for that 
to happen, council gave away a few sacrifices to the staff. Yeah. Yeah. They allowed them, the outdoor staff, an extra time off. They finished early so they could take, go and get the money out of the bank right. and things like that. Yeah. So there are some incentives to have yeah. the money paid into the bank. Yeah. Right. But going back to my work history, I, I stayed in the finance with under Max Baker's control for a while. And then management, in their wisdom, <laughs> decided that uh, they wanted someone qualified in, oh. uh, as Max Baker's offside. Yeah. Right? So I was transferred to administration. Yes. Which was... So you didn't think about getting qualifications? I d or? Yes, I did. Yeah. I did study. Yeah. But I hated study. <laughs> and uh, I got halfway through my studies. I even went to, to tech in Sydney twice yes. a week. Yeah. And I went to tech in Penrith. Yes. But I hated studying. <laughs> and uh, I, had, I had more interest in... Uh, in uh, in um, being involved with um, organising football and cricket and yeah. playing those games <laughs> and doing my studies, yeah. much to my uh, the disgust of my father. Yes. However, yeah. but they they uh, they appointed someone else yeah. who was qualified to be Max Baker's assistant, and I went and worked in administration yeah. for a number of years. I hated that, uh, but then there was a bit of an upheaval in the pay office mm -hmm. and they, came, they got me to come back and take over back over the pay office and uh, I uh, then looked after the pay office again and, be, and again took over the role as assistant accountant. In those days you had a bookkeeping machine operator that, that, that did the, the, the ledgers and she produced the payroll slips yeah. on a, an accounting machine. Yeah. Right. That was that was that was that was all done on a bookkeeping machine, yeah. and then I'm not sure exactly of, of when the computer arrived, mm. but I think it was in the 70s. Mm. We got the computer system into the into the into the council, and then the uh, payroll went onto a yeah. computer system. But in the meantime, um, I got more involved in the social side of things. Uh, Max Baker stood down as running the, being involved with the social club mm -hmm. and handed the reins to me yeah. and I became the secretary treasurer of the social club, yeah. um, organising the Christmas party, which was mainly the only thing that the social club ran in those days. Yeah. We used to have an odd cricket game and football game occasionally, yeah. but it was mainly the social, the, the, the Chris, annual Christmas party, which was then held at the Penrith Leagues Club. Mm. We were... We were privileged, I suppose, mm. to have as the president of the social club uh, a director of the Leagues Club, yeah. Murray Clark, and he was able to organise um, uh, a bit of a discount yeah. for the Leagues Club gave us for yeah. having our function at the yeah. Leagues Club. Yeah. And we used to have some great functions at the yeah. old Leagues Club, you know, on the corner of, uh, of Station Street mm. and Reserve Street mm -hmm. there before they moved to where they are today. Yeah. Yeah. We had many Christmas parties mm. down there that went yeah. off very well. And so my role was as Secretary Treasurer. We just had to organise the Christmas party, that was all. So did you have anything to do with the credit union? Yeah, the credit union didn't come, come in until later. Um, and the credit union, I think, finished in about 2000, uh, yes. something like that. And it yes. went for 26 years. Yeah. I was involved in the credit so union. So was the state government involved in uh, encouraging councils to close credit unions? No, no. The, How did that the, the red, they got too much red tape. Right. You know, you had to, okay. the, the, the rules and regulations mm. of banking and so yeah. forth made it, made it very difficult. Although mm. we had a full-time bookkeeper yeah. and, and cashier and yeah. person looking after the credit union. And it was here that, in the library. We did have it in the library. Yeah. Originally, when we started the credit union, mm. um, we, it was all done voluntary. Yeah. Uh, Bob Wilkinson was the first secretary of it. Uh, Don Hawkins was the, the president, mm. and uh, I, was one, I was one of the original directors. When Don Hawkins retired, I took over as the president of the yeah. credit union 
and I was still president of the credit union when we amalgamated with the police credit and union. I, I've still got my account. Yes, yes. With the police, uh, police bank. Yes, the today. police bank now. Yes, but with the, my, still my original number that transferred across. Yes, but the, oh, the, but the credit union served a very good and a valuable support for council yeah. staff. Yeah. We assisted a lot of people with in gaining loans. small loans. Yes, yeah. I think the most we could loan mm. without security in those days was $2,000. Yep. Mm. With security, you could more or less go up to $4,000. Yeah. Uh, and we helped a lot of staff yep. members. And um, they, uh, you know, with savings and, mm -hmm. and supporting them with them, with their... And it helped a lot of people out of trouble. Yeah, yes, exactly. But, uh, after working in, in, under Max Baker in, the, in, the, in, the, in finance, I was appointed as the council's first personnel officer. Yeah. Um, and as the personnel officer, I moved out of finance mm. and I had a little office. <laughs> By then, council had outgrown the council chambers mm. and had moved their main lot of staff into the Cole Bucken store, mm. which was opposite the Penrith Technical College in Henry Street. Okay, we yes. took over that whole building. Yep. It was two stories, yep. two floors, yep. and uh, all the council staff, except once again, the finance section yeah. was working out of Borick House. Yes. I did work out of Borick House to start with. Yes. We occupied two well. different sections of Borick House. Yeah. Uh, on the same floor, and at one time before we went to Colbuckham, mm. the health and building department also worked out of Colbuckham. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So uh, also worked out worked out of Boric House. Sorry. Just shows you how scattered the council. Yeah, the council was sta scattered were. scattered over two yeah. or three buildings yeah. at that stage. Yeah. And I suppose that during my service with the council, I must have worked out of four or five different buildings. Yeah. Yes. But in personnel, in my role of personnel officer, I was involved in uh, in, uh, in interviewing all the council staff. A any new positions, yes. I got involved in all yeah. Yeah. interviews. And you even interviewed yeah, me. Yeah, interviewed you yeah. when you started. <laughs> and also yeah. in the early 70s, there was a big move in council, was the... Uh, opening of the first child care centre. Yes, okay. The first child care centre was opened at, was called Your Army, was opened at Warrington, mm. and it was, it was one of its, a unique one. Mm. It was a very large uh, uh, centre. Yep. It was built, I believe, it, might, it was built after Gough Whitlam finished, I know, mm. but it was built, they said it was built with Gough's money. Okay. I think it was grant money that yes. was been allocated prior to... Yep by the Whitlam government okay. and this building was uh, I think there's a 60 place childcare centre um, and you don't you never built any as large as that again mm. council council grew from that building yes. to being the largest employer and uh, construction of childcare centres in New South Wales yeah. Yeah. they had that yeah. many childcare centres mm. and still do yep. yes so they they really they Pays really the set way. the pattern for yes. childcare. Yeah. 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 On our laps, we yeah. have two interesting little documents. So one is the centenary book that was put out in 1971 for the hundredth anniversary of local government in Penrith. But this is the um, the actual newspaper that came out at the time, the Penrith Press, and uh, for the fifth of May, 1971, and it's all about the celebrations the huge celebrations that Penrith Council put on. So, Jim, yeah, tell us about <laughs> your experiences and, and your involvement. I yes, guess, the, the, certainly the celebration of, of the centenary was a very big, um, very big part yeah. of, of, of the, the history event. Of, of event in the history of, uh, of anyone that worked on the council. Yep. It was, uh, they had a, a local committee that organised the events but the staff were well and truly involved. Yes. Uh, the, the, the staff really got behind it. Yep. We, uh, 
the council allowed us. We we grew uh, our hair side leaves and beads, <laughs> etc. And the oh, they're uh, real, were they? Yes, oh. and, and the girls <laughs> the girls dressed dressed up in in colonial yes. um, dresses, etc. Yeah, yep. and um, and they had a parade through the street, and a lot of the staff, the, the girls, were on the float yes. there that we have a photo of yeah, there. Yeah. Um, they took part in that. They did have a, a princess competition, yes, yes. and many of the girls who worked on the council were involved in that and took yep. part of that. And uh, it was very big celebrations. It's, it was spread over, I suppose, about a month. Mm. I was involved in looking after the, um, the, the, the function down on the river. Yes. The river fest function. Yep. Involved with making sure parking was, there was adequate parking and parking went, uh, uh, ma ma was, was, there was no havoc or any yeah. problems with the parking because it was, it was held down at the river and it was a very congested area. Yeah. Uh, I didn't get involved in running any of the events, but just more or less overseeing it. Don Hawkins was, was in charge, the council officer who was in charge of the celebrations, but they went for many, uh, over a period of months. And the council staff were involved. Yeah. They had a pram pushing contest where all the council staff were yeah. in, a lot of the council staff were involved in this pram pushing contest, <laughs> a contest with three other, two other teams, where they push this pram for 24 hours round the roads, the rural roads of Penrith. Right. And my role in that was I was a support team. I was driving a support station wagon. Yeah. Where I'd pick up uh, the uh, the new people that were going to do the running, and pick uh, meet the uh, runners and relieve them. And the new, st the new runners had come in, in, uh, uh, as part of the team and I'd take the, the old runners back to the, old, the council chambers where they could have a lie down and right. a rest and something to eat. <laughs> and oh, that would be dear. rotating all oh. the time. So it went on for 24 hours. Wow. So it was two of us that did it. Yeah. And we've got some photos there yeah. of the uh, support team and the, uh, and, and the team that ran that took place yeah. in that pram pushing contest. Yeah, it was. It, and so, um, you did you attend the ball? Yes. 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 Got dressed up. Yes. The <laughs> the centenary ball was uh, a, uh, a, a, a certainly an eye opener. It uh, it involved. Um, it was held at the Leagues Club. Yes. I've still got the original tickets. So I, I when I purchased my tickets, I okay. still got the. The tickets that I had. Oh, you had to buy tickets. Oh, then. we had to buy the tickets, oh, yeah. and uh, but it was a very big good night, and it was a very good function put on at the Leagues Club. Yep. And the Leagues Club went to every possible way in making it a success. Yes. It was certainly a, uh, uh, I suppose, the prime um, uh, part of the social side of it. Yes. The organisation of the uh, of the actual ceremony mm. of uh, when the when the governor Sir Roden Cutler came. Yes. And uh, and the uh, freedom of the city. Yes. Uh, by the by the, uh, the granting of the freedom of the city. Yep. That was a, that's a photo of the of the dress up at the ball of the. Uh, oh, here's of, a Staff. Yes. Yeah. That was Arthur Court, and that was the staff also dressed up in yeah. their, in their, in their, the, that was the general manager and his staff, or with their vests on. Yeah. And some of them were dressed up in uh, colonial uniforms, yeah. etc. But it was a great night, thoroughly enjoyed by everyone. And at that night, I took along that night a girl in the office, mm -hmm. who I later married. Right. You know, Okay. I took her to that ball. Yes. We, were, uh, uh, we weren't going out mm. uh, steadily at that stage, but later on, uh, she worked in the office, in the in the in the accounts section as well, in the finance section. <laughs> uh, we, met, we were able to uh, do our courting without uh, upsetting the office <laughs> or anything like that. 
We became engaged in 1972 okay. and married in 1973. All right. And she stayed working on the council until she left and had children. Yeah. Uh, after th that was in uh, after we'd been married for 10 years. Yeah. I think yeah. we had our first son. You're right. Then. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> that was that was that was the uh, start of my. Uh, Right. Courtship, <laughs> the council centenary oh, ball. Lovely. Yes, it went off well. <laughs> yeah. But the, it was a lot smaller those days, yes. and uh, I got involved in uh, looking at, and, and getting involved in the welfare well, you and trying would, to look after the staff. We would see you a lot. You would come around, and um, yeah, we sort of got to know you really well, much much more than yes. a lot of other staff. Um, because you sort of kept in contact with us all. Also, at that stage, council appointed new managers to the mm. organisations in various departments. And one of them was the human resources manager, yeah. which I applied for, but I didn't get. Mm. And so I became part of the human resources department. Yeah. And uh, I was still carrying out the personnel role. Mm. And at that stage... At one time there, the, we had an occupation health and safety officer. Yep. He resigned. Mm. They didn't appoint a new occupation health and safety officer. They asked me would I take over the role. Yep. And I did that. And I also looked after council's insurance at that stage. Yeah. And I wasn't doing as much personnel work, mm. but I was looking after employee relations yep. and occupation health and safety. I used to go to the depot every morning, the council mm. depot it's, it's in um, Cox Avenue. I visited there every morning to uh, talk to the outdoor staff um, before they went out on the job. And then I'd go around to the various work sites at times and then I'd do the inspection of the child care mm. centres and the offices. And In 1994, the, uh, this building was opened and that again was a big culture shock to the staff. We were, staff were spread over two or three different buildings mm -hmm. and all of a sudden we came into a new building, once again new facilities and everything, but it was open plan office. Yeah. We didn't, in, in previous positions I had held in the other buildings, I had an office of my own mm -hmm. and all of a sudden <laughs> you had an open plan office. <laughs> yep. But it was a bit of a culture shock to come from a... Um, uh, and a little office of your yeah. own, or a big office of your own, yeah. into an open plan office. So that's what happened in 1994. Before I finish, I'd just like to talk about a couple of my things that going back that, 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 that highlight my, career, um, my life on the council. The first one was in 1961 with the death of the mayor, mm. Leo Spees. He died suddenly in Sydney. I think he was at a meeting or... He was a businessman. He was the mayor at the time. He died suddenly. And I still remember uh, his funeral was in Penrith at the Catholic Church and the, and the staff line both sides of, the, of High Street in honour of him. Yeah. Um, so that was, um, that was a, a major thing that occurred then. And then in later years, when Harold Corr died suddenly, Harold Corr was the... He started on the council in the 1940s uh, uh, as a clerk, worked his way up after coming back from the F Second World War and uh, became uh, town clerk in 1969. And then he died suddenly, died suddenly, and uh, it was a, a certainly a major shock to us all. I realised with the advent of the computer, and the way things were changing, um, technology changing, uh, I felt that uh, in 2005 it was time for me to retire. Mm. Uh, I had, had a long career with the council, thoroughly enjoyed it. Yes. They looked after me tremendously. Yeah. I worked close to handy to home. At times I did enjoy mm. the service of the council car, it was only through the council that I received the OAM in 2002. Mm. I'm sure it was only through the council. Yeah. 
um, that I received that award, but uh, I had great support from my wife and family in my career with the council. And uh, the council, I'm indebted to the council, the mayor, Jackie mm. Greeno, and the general manager, Alan Travers, who gave me a civic dinner when I retired, mm. which I suppose not many uh, people in my position yeah. were honoured with such, an, uh, such yeah. a dinner That's right. upstairs. Mm. Uh, uh, very few people were given that privilege. Mm. Uh, certainly senior officers, yeah. but not a, a bit of an also ran like yeah. me <laughs> who received that. But uh, my, I suppose my biggest joy was trying to help people uh, and, and uh, help them in their uh, not... You, get, you got to know them personally. Yeah. You got to know their families. You got to know their lives and what they did and so forth because you got involved with them, trying to help them. And I hope uh, by living in Penrith, uh, I can still get involved. Yeah. That's about it. Thank you. <laughs>